Today, we're going to be talking about the AI war between Microsoft and Google. Last week, I did a video on ChatGPT with a high level overview of what's happening. But today, in this video, I'll go more in depth about Microsoft and Google and why I think they're making the moves they're making. All right, before I go deep, let's go through a quick news recap that's relevant to today's video. A few weeks ago, Google launched Bard AI. Sorry, I mean Google announced that they will launch Bard eventually to compete with ChatGPT. You know, Google tends to do a lot of announcing, but not a lot of shipping. However, in the ad, Bard made a mistake, which caused their stock price to tank. Not the greatest first impression, and the product hasn't even launched yet. Some Googlers criticized them for trying to launch this too quickly, that they rushed it. Not only did they make a mistake in the ad during a demo in Paris, they weren't able to do the demo because they forgot their phone they were going to use to show off one of Bard's features. Look at this clip. Let's see how that works with a live demo. Oh. We are missing the phone. <laughs> We're missing the phone. <laughs> we will have to, we have no, okay, we're gonna move on. We can't find the phone. Sorry, we'll do a let one later in the special Q and A. How embarrassing. The day after the announcement, Microsoft responded by releasing a new Bing with ChatGPT built in to compete with Google search. For context, Google basically has a monopoly on search with 93% of all search volumes. Currently, the 3% Bing searches are probably from people with new computers using Microsoft Edge to search Google to get to google.com. You know, I was initially joking, but it turns out it's actually true from this article saying that Google is the most searched word on Bing. But jokes aside, Google needs to take this threat seriously because it is not just about search. It's about the AI war and this is just one of many battles. For Microsoft, Bing is just another product because Microsoft's revenue is very diversified. If Microsoft was a YouTuber, it would look like this. Hey, Microsoft here. Today I'm going to show you how I built 12 income streams in my 20s. Don't forget to smash that like button and turn your default search to Bing. It really helps with the algorithm. All right, let's get to it. For Google, search is their lifeblood. In this situation, it's easier to attack than to defend your market share, since Bing can take more risk and ship faster because it has nothing to lose. And by that, I mean it has no users to lose. While Google has to move slower not to risk its reputation and lose their search users, which is their main source of revenue. Not only is Microsoft competing in search, it's also competing in web browsers by revamping Microsoft Edge by integrating OpenAI's tech into it. They call it your personal co-pilot of the web. Sounds familiar? GitHub Copilot helps you get your ideas into code faster. A web browser copilot will help you read web pages faster with AI summarization, draft emails faster with AI generation, and bully people on Twitter faster with AI suggested insults. This is their vision of what the next era of the internet will look like. An internet browsing experience, personalized and assisted with AI. And whoever gets there faster wins the AI war. To explain this AI war, here's an analogy. It's like a chess game between Team Microsoft and Team Google. The goal is simple, the kings have to survive. Microsoft and Google are the kings because they have lots of money and fat, they move slowly, and their only goal in life is to not die. If you've ever worked at a big tech company, you'd know that things move very slowly because it's filled with processes, extensive reviews, and unproductive employees like I was. So they can't move as fast as a startup. That's why in order for big tech to survive, they need to acquire or invest in startups to hedge against new tech that can potentially disrupt them and cause them to fall behind. Which is why Microsoft partnered with AI startup OpenAI and Google acquired DeepMind and also invested in Anthropic. These companies are the queens, not because they're fabulous, but because they can move really fast and make breakthroughs in AI. The king relies on the queen to make strong moves and win this war, but she needs money, which is what the king is able to supply. But I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke tech company. The king is also able to supply an army of products and apps for the queen. Those are the pawns, and each of them are in a proxy battle against each other, like ChatGPT against Bard and Bing against Google Search. Winning these battles is important because your pawns can get promoted into stronger pieces, like a rook. And by that, I mean you dominate in one vertical and you start snowballing. 
To illustrate, let's say your product is used by more users. So you get more data. And since you have more data, you can fine tune your model better so your product gets better. And since your product is better, then you're gonna keep getting more users. It's a winner takes all market. And once this flywheel starts, it's hard to compete because you have proprietary user data and a well-trained model creating this barrier of entry that gets thicker and thicker for newcomers. That in turn will feed into your queen to help its research to reach more AI breakthroughs, which will further feed into your suite of products. To summarize, the king gives the queen money and an army of products. The queen backs up the products with the latest AI tech. The pawns will give user data back to the queen so that the queen can improve the AI. The pawns also give revenue back to the king so that the king can reinvest in itself. Now, the advancement of the pawns is key to winning this war. Hence, winning these proxy battles is helpful for winning the real battle, which is who can achieve more algorithmic breakthroughs in AI, or even reach AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. If that happens, all the pawns will become queens and you'll win the war. Or the queen will just revolt and kill their kings, and actually kill all their pawns too, and the chessboard, and me. Singularity. Anyways, in tech, there's no such thing as too big to fail. In fact, you're more at risk when you've grown too big. Even small decisions start to take forever to get the company aligned and execute on them. So one solution is to acquire these startups and slowly move into a desired location for the company. That's why you see big tech companies constantly acquiring startups to hedge against their downfall, like Facebook buying Instagram for $1 billion to solidify their lead in social media, Amazon acquiring Whole Foods to solidify their lead in delivering everything to you so you never need to leave your house. Right now, the biggest threat to these big tech companies is falling behind in AI. Let me tell you a cautionary tale of a big tech company once valued at $125 billion that ended up selling for just $4.8 billion. That company was Yahoo, or more like Yahoo. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's go back to dial-up internet era. The time when, if you were connected to the internet, you couldn't use your phone at home. Remember this sick-ass tune? Back in 1995, Yahoo was a beast. At first, it was just a web directory of other websites organized in a hierarchy. That's how we used to organize the web. Then Yahoo also became the main search engine people use. It was called Yahoo Search. Back then, people used to go to these web portals as their first destination on the internet, and Yahoo was one of them. A web portal was a site that internet users relied on for everything, from searching the web, sending emails, and reading the news and Yahoo dominated with Yahoo Search, Yahoo Mail, and Yahoo News. If you own the entry point of the internet, you control the internet, and Yahoo was the biggest web portal, beating out AOL and MSN. Yahoo was basically the Google of the early 2000s. Speaking of Google, in 1998, Google actually approached Yahoo to sell their companies for $1 million. But back then, Google didn't have any users. It was only their page rank algorithm. So Yahoo refused. Also, the way Yahoo search worked is it would search its own Yahoo directories. Yahoo basically handpicked all the content you need on the internet organized on their site. Implementing Google search would actually get users off the platform and into other websites, which Yahoo didn't want. Yahoo wanted users to just stay on their platform. They wanted to be the whole internet. But the internet grew and the landscape was changing. You couldn't expect people to get everything you need on one platform. Google over the years slowly crept up and became one of the top four websites by monthly visits since it was useful by showing relevant search results. They were also insanely profitable because of their ad model. Very soon, Google gained the majority of the search market share. Yahoo realizes his mistake and tries to buy Google for $3 billion. But Google said, no, we want $5 billion. And then Yahoo said, no. Idiot. And that's the beginning of their downfall. Tech moves fast, user behavior changes, and the digital landscape evolves. The way people interact with the internet in the early 2000s is way different than in the late 2000s. Google became the internet's entry point. Who knew search would be so important? Well, I guess Google did, yeah. 
Just like today, we have an idea of how we interact with the internet using phone apps and web browsers, but we actually have no idea what that will look like in 10 years. That's why it's vital for big tech companies like Microsoft and Google to hedge for the future by buying out all these new tech startups to try to keep up with the latest advancements. It doesn't get much coverage, but Google invested $1.5 billion in crypto startups. Actually, look at all these companies and their blockchain investments. Most of it will not see the light of day. I like this one, <laughs> but you need to have an open mind to survive as a big company. Companies are constantly trying to get ahead. There's a higher cost to not invest in something that might become the future than to invest in something that ends up being a failure. Yahoo tried to build their own new search engine to compete with Google, but they just couldn't keep up. They acquired search engine Inktomi and also ad revenue maker Overture, but their execution just wasn't there. It's not that Yahoo didn't know that acquiring startups was necessary to stay competitive and to grow their business. The mistake was not knowing what areas to invest in. For example, they paid $5.7 billion for Broadcast.com betting on internet radio, and also $3.6 billion for GeoCities to bet on user-generated websites. If Yahoo would have invested in Google, not even acquired, things might have looked very different. If Yahoo knew that search was going to be such a big deal, a game changer to the internet, they would have been more proactive in acquiring Google. But hindsight is 2020. The story of Yahoo continues with a string of desperate pivots and changes in leadership, and finally ends with Yahoo selling to Verizon for a measly $4.48 billion. Today, Microsoft and Google think that the future is AI and it will transform the way we interact with the internet. That's why they're trying to move fast on this and even rushing things. With ChatGPT getting so much adoption, Google's reputational risk no longer outweighs the risk of falling behind, which is why they rush to release BARD. It's almost a life or death situation, which brings us back to the AI war. Here's the state of the war right now. ChatGPT is way ahead of BARD which didn't even launch yet. But I think this battle is more theatrical, more for brand awareness, since I don't see people using ChatGPT much if AI will soon be integrated in products that we use daily, like search or web browsers. Bing is behind in users, but that allows it to move fast. Google is super care with search since it's their flagship moneymaker. Now, OpenAI is well-funded with $10 billion of Microsoft money and has momentum and is winning the public attention. Google has the advantage of its big existing user base. They dominate in terms of market share for search and their Chrome web browser. GitHub Copilot, in my opinion, has already won the coding vertical, so it's no longer a pawn, it's a rook now. I would say Google is not looking so good right now. There is a real risk of losing this race, which would render a lot of Google's products irrelevant. But I'm still cheering for them since they gave me this free hat. Google is trying really hard to not let history repeat itself, where this time Google is in Yahoo's position. Now they've proven that they can dethrone the king, but now let's see if they can defend it. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.